Today on the channel, we're going to do some Micro 1S long range. Welcome back to the channel. Today's review, we're going to check out the Sub 250 Nanofly 20. This is a 1S 1002 brushless motors, tiny little props. We've got some tri props on here and a Cadex Ant camera. This is the Eco camera with a little dipole in the back. We're going to see how it does with the TBS Crossfire on here. We're going to send it out here in the field where we normally send the bigger quads. So if you want to fly long range, you want to get some distance without kind of going out of sort of line of sight and still kind of have a lot of fun for some range flying, this guy will actually do that. Let's go ahead and do a flight test with this little Nano Fly 20 TBS version. And then after that, we'll come back to the bench and I'll show you a little more about this little guy on the bench and uh, what it's capable of. Yep. guys welcome back from the flight test hopefully you enjoyed that kind of quick kind of stick banging first part and then kind of some distance and range flying with this little nanofly 20 i don't know that a lot of reviewers have really kind of utilized the tbs crossfire on there and really sent it out there um, i was flying way oh, kind of down the road a little bit and then way out by the river mostly where i fly a lot of the bigger five inch freestyle drones and like the seven and the 10 inch class drones so uh, it was kind of fun just to to make this a little mini explorer and i felt like i could go places that i wouldn't normally go with a five or seven inch um you know skirting and down under the trees through the dark side over there where that abandoned house is um, and kind of back out of there up over the house and through the trees and down the road even um, and then back over the trees and back out by the river so I feel like the TBS Crossfire is reliable. I trust it. And if you're if you're new to TBS Crossfire, you got to give it a try because it really does make a huge difference 
when you're going to do some range flying. Um, and the penetration on TBS Crossfire, even on a 1S battery, is great. Uh, one warning I will give you is that if you get this one, don't fly it down close to 3 volts because when this battery got close to 3 volts, as I was coming back across the field, I started to get these uh, kind of horizontal lines across and that VTX on 200 milliwatt on this 1S 530 milliamp battery will just almost go to, to static and then it'll go black on you and you'll be out of video. So um, I, I was pushing it kind of hard and I really should have been back by uh, around 3.5 to, to 3.8 volts. So um, as a resting voltage. So uh, resting voltage is when you land and you turn off the motors. But you know, as you're flying, it's going to be lower. When you land, it'll go up a little bit. So keep that in mind. I feel like these batteries flew well, though. And I think the flight time, I feel like if I was just cruising and not really hitting the throttle, I could probably get like five minutes out of uh, the 1002 motors. 21,000 kV also is fairly high. But when you want to freestyle this, it, it rips. It will go to the top of that 40-foot tree. Uh, it'll do corkscrew dives. You can make gaps, and it, it, it feels durable as well because I flew across, and I tried to make the gap underneath my van in between myself and the back wheels, and I literally hit the ground, and I, it, it smacked so hard. It sounded like a rock hitting the ground, and then it flipped off into the grass, um, and I didn't make that, but I don't see any structural damage on this quad, which is kind of amazing. Um, when I first plugged this quad in too, by the way, I had one motor, it was kind of um, twitching a little bit. And when I went to take off, it flipped over. And I had to basically plug that kind of uh, motor harness right there back into the flight controller and then restart the battery and then everything was fine. So if you get yours, make sure you go over the whole thing with a two mil driver, make sure all the bolts are seated um, and a little tiny Phillips head. You do get that in the box as well. This TPU mount really saved it in that crash, and, and it didn't even um, give any scratches on the front of the lens here, which is kind of amazing, because this is a rock uh, kind of um, parking lot out here with that Cadex Ant Eco, so um, that survived. And I feel like this, this wire is a little bit close over here coming off the TBS Crossfire Nano right here, but um, no prop strike there for that. And I would suggest also twisting this cable up and bringing it down and around so that this doesn't get eaten up, because this, this cable is actually kind of a bit long and there's a lot of wild cable hanging out here so go ahead and give that a twist and tuck it under when you fly yours we got a tpu mount on the bottom as well we have the micro port down there and it's nice if you're a beginner it's this is great because you can if you have a motor that went out say if i had that bad motor i could just order a new motor off the website unplug one put a new one back on so i like to call this plug and play uh, pretty easy motors and like solderless motors which makes a huge deal inside the box you also get like a screwdriver like i was telling you you want to go over this quad and make sure everything is nice and tightened down um, we have a unibody frame and we also have you know i thought this was a gap rc flight controller because when i hooked it up to beta flight it actually said uh, beta flight f4 and i'm looking at the specs on the website and uh it's 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 not a, a GEP RC. Um, it was having kind of problems like loading up. This is supposed to be Red Fox A1 F4 with five amp ESCs on here, four and one AIO uh, flight controller. So, uh, but the cool thing is that the VTX is a 5.8 VTX with 200 milliwatt. And on something that's on 1S, I love 200 milliwatt because 25 can be sketchy sometimes, but it's nice to be able to really get out there and get some distance but you gotta remember to get back uh, very soon. Um, and also, I, I think I mentioned that might have been an e ET 2.0 connector, but it's actually the GNB um, 27 connector that's that's on this. So um, I, do, I, I do have possibly a link for a six-in-one charger setup um, that Ishin used to make back in the day that, that has this connector on it. I still have one myself, and it's great because you can charge six bit batteries at once. Um, these are the HQ props that come in the box as well, tri-blade two inch props and this box is pretty much my carrying case now and protector box as well uh, i got the same thing with the, the whoop fly 16 when we reviewed that one a while back so uh, i'm happy to see that more sub 250 quads are coming out i mean i would really love to see like sub 250 come out with something like a three and a half inch um and, and i haven't been on their website in a while but um the last one the first one that i reviewed was the whoop 16 series um, and then the Whoop Fly came, and now I have the Nano Fly 20. And, and so far, out of the, probably out of the three, I think my favorite one is the Nano Fly 20 because 
I got crossfire on here and it's fast enough that I can I can I can go explore like farmers fields like like uh, hundreds of foot you know a couple hundred uh, feet away uh, maybe uh, three football fields down the street um, and you can really make some range with this thing it's so small and and really I think it's actually pretty quiet I know some of you guys want to know about how quiet is it? You can barely hear this thing coming. Um, and if you were out in your yard, you almost wouldn't know what it was. It's, it's super quiet. But let's go ahead and give some final thoughts now. And uh, on this little sub 250G micro range ripper. So I think this is kind of one of the more expensive quads as far as the size goes. Uh, it's not super big. It is super lightweight quad, but it has analog on here. And for guys that don't have DJI or HD zero yet, this one is great. It's going to pair up with your analog goggles, TBS crossfire module, which most of you guys already have. Uh, if you want to fly in a brand new, this would also be a cool like second quad if you want to start flying some range out there. Um, I have one warning for you guys, if you didn't catch that in that bench review over there, uh, is that when this battery gets down to around three volts, she's going to start to black out on this VTX. So if you're running like 200, 200 milliwatt on here and you're coming back from a long trip across the field like I was, you may start seeing lines across the front of the video and then eventually it's going to go static and then it's gonna go black on you. So that's kind of a warning. You have about probably 10 seconds when it does that. So uh, watch your voltage on this guy and don't go too low when you're running 200 milliwatt. Now, if you wanna run 25 milliwatt, you can still get way out there on 25 milliwatt. So trust me, guys have gone miles out on 25. You'll notice that in that flight test, as I was flying this little guy, when I start to lose video in my goggles, what I would do is um, when they say, when in doubt, boost out. Um, so that's that's one of my sayings, when in doubt, boost out. Um, so when your video starts to go, you're behind a big thick tree like that one back there, kind of boost up higher and higher as you go, you're able to get that signal back to your goggles. And I use some pretty lo tall long range antennas on my 5.8 goggles to try to make the best penetration. But that really helps if you go higher up, especially if you're running a long line of trees like out over here on this side. And dipping down behind those, I noticed I would start to lose video, so I would kind of make my way back up. But that's kind of a tip for the new guys. Veteran flyers, you guys know about that. But this one's fun. It freestyles. It can range fly. And I don't know, for the price, $169 with a GEP RC flight controller on here. Uh, 1002 motors, 21,000 kV. You got plenty of fun for freestyle and some range flying. And I, I thought it had a decent flight time on it too. So I think it's pretty cool. You guys can check this one out down in the link below. If you'd like to join our Discord, please do that because after we get to uh, just, just past around 1,000 subscribers, we're going to start probably having a subscription for about a dollar a person uh, to get in there because it's becoming such a community for everyone. So it's a lot of fun. Go ahead and jump in there. Grab our link down below for Discord and join us for the fun. 24 hours a day, FV. 24-7, guys. I'm Justin Davis. Take care. Sub 250G, Nanofly 20, 1S, Range Flyer, and Ripper. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.